the cloud. Excellent. Okay. And I'm just going to go ahead and start sharing my screen as well. So if you can't see what? Okay. If you can't see my screen. Yes. Start broadcast. Okay. Okay. Can everyone see my screen? Yep. Yep. Great. All right. Perfect. So, um, like I said, not really on a desktop um, computer right now. So my PowerPoint isn't exactly full screen. So just bear with me. Um, we're just going to go through this PowerPoint first. I'm going to show you guys a couple of apps um, online that I think would be really helpful to improve your experience and kind of make the, the transition to both of life a little easier for you. Um, and then we're going to take our quiz and have a quick Q and A, and I'll show you guys where to access our 2022 fleet as it stands now um, at the end. So if that sounds like a good breakdown. We'll get started here. I already made my little announcement about who, um, if for whatever reason you have any problems um, with the app, um, I'm gonna give everyone two minutes to kind of get everything started before we start the quiz. So we can ask questions and kind of figure it out um, hey, during that time. Yes, ma'am. Can I just interrupt for one quick question? Um, yes, I'm, trying go ahead. Manage, I'm trying to manage childcare. I'm just curious about how long do you think that this is going to go? So normally it goes to about 815. Is that okay? Yep, that's great. Thank you. For, yeah, you're very welcome. 815 at latest 830, but I, I don't normally go past 815. Um, okay, so our first slide here is just navigating Carefree Boat Club. Um, like I said, your handbook is going to be your, your you know, most useful resource in getting access to all of the club information. My contact information, um, every single Carefree Boat Club for Southern Connecticut has its own individual cell phone number that you can both text and call. That information is located both in a sticker on the boats and in the handbook. So if you ever need to contact us, you can do so um, with the numbers you find in the handbook. Um, there's also some information in the handbook okay. about training. Um, OTW just stands for on the water, which means quite literally on the water yes, training. Yes. We pair up with one of our licensed captains, which could be me, it could be uh, Captain Rich, Captain Matt, or Mitch, or, uh, Mitch may, or David may do your training as well. So hopefully I get to meet some of you in the on the water training. I really enjoy it. Um, so hopefully we'll get to do that. And that usually lasts about two and a half to three hours. And we try to plan it on the better weather days, though you might get a cool day in May now and then. So try to keep that in mind, dress appropriately for the training because it does get kind of chilly out on the water. So um, can I just confirm, sorry, just quick yeah. question. Um, sure. So that's not required if you already have your uh, Connecticut voting certification? It is required. It's required by all of our members. And the reason why is because we like to give you guys a chance to kind of introduce yourself to the local waters, especially of your specific club. So if you're a Westport member or a Bridgeport member, you're going to do specialized training outside of that, um, outside of that marina. So you get used to where the slips are, how to get in and out of the slips and how to use the channel appropriately. So all of that is really club specific. So we do like to do the training um, with every member, um, regardless as to, to you know, how many, how many years they've kind of had under their belt voting. Though, of course, if you have been voting for a really long time, you can expect the training to go a little bit shorter, um, just because we don't have to really test you on as much. You're already pretty familiar. All right. Well, just a couple of uh, the communication. So early on, I was told that I, you wouldn't have to do that. So I'm fine to do it. But the, the information suggested that uh, if you had the certification, you didn't need to do it. So Okay, yeah, I apologize if there was any miscommunication on our end. Um, the training is required for, for all of our members. Like I said, if you have a lot of experience, um, the training does go shorter and it, it might be good for you as well. Like I said, just to get a handle on the, the specific type of boats that we have. Um, one of the boats that we have that's kind of uncommon is a brig and our training is done on that specific vessel. So it'll be great to kind of give you like a, like a refresher into boating and then an introduction to this kind of new style of vessel as well. So, um, so yeah, I hope that answers the question. Yep. Okay. Okay. Good. Great. Just so everyone knows, I can't actually see any of you. So it looks like, so if it looks like I'm not looking at you, it's because I'm not, um, I can't see anyone. So I hope you're not, I'm not coming off as rude. I just can't see anybody. It's just my screen. No. And, and just um, so you know, we can't see you, your, your kind of picture is blocked out. So oh, you, great. you will not okay, look perfect. rude. So you guys can't <laughs> see me making dumb faces. Love it. <laughs> nope. <laughs> um, okay. So just the moving on with the slide here. Um, you know, there's some information about kind of what you can expect from your membership, um, namely the way your membership actually works. So if any of you are trial packs, you're aware that there's a ceiling to the number of times you can actually go out, either eight or 10. 
if you're premier twos, premier fours, or weekday onlys, there's no cap. There's uh, an unlimited amount of times that you can go out throughout the season. So just those kinds of expectations and the amount of times based on your membership that you purchased, um, how many times you can expect to go out as a total during the season if you have an unlimited membership, all that information is located um, right inside the, the member handbook. So once you get it, definitely give that one a really good thorough read through. And if you have any questions about it, shoot me a text, give me a call, shoot me an email. I'm happy to answer anything I can or clarify anything that might be confusing in there. Liz, I have a quick question. I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, no, it's okay. Please. Um, the, going back to that on bo that, that uh, boating training, is that something we yes. can book now? Uh, is that... So as soon as you're cleared tonight, and I will send out your names um, to Mary Beth, who's already been in contact with you. As soon as yeah. I send out your names to her saying, check, they've completed the Zoom class, she will be reaching out with you um, with certainly within the week, if not within a couple of days to schedule your on the water training with you. Great, thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Are there any other questions at the moment? Okay, no, nope. great. Perfect. Um, all right. So the next thing that we're just going to go over quickly is ResNet. Now, ResNet is just our online reservation system. So if any of you have ever booked a hotel, an Airbnb, a Motel 8, anything like that, ResNet works the same way. Unfortunately, because ResNet is currently closed because the club's not open yet, I can't demonstrate for you what it's like to make a reservation online. But I do want to point out, and I will show you, hopefully you all can see my screen. Over here on our YouTube channel, um, you can see at the at the left the leftmost video is our ResNet landing page, and then over all the way to the right is how to make a foreign reservation on ResNet. Those videos do demonstrate all about ResNet, you know, right um, with the screen right in front of you, and with some explanations from I think Mary Beth and Mitch in the background. So those videos are going to be really helpful to you. So go ahead and give those a watch. All I did was YouTube search Carefree Boat Club Southern Connecticut and our YouTube page comes right up. So it's really easy to access those videos. Okay, back to my email. Great. So again, so little self plug there for, uh, for YouTube. And there's some videos there about the landing page, what you can find on there. On the landing page, as soon as you log in, you can find weather, uh, information about weather, whether or not the club is closed, announcements that the club is making for all, that all the members should be aware of, for example, um, you know, if we're putting in a note, uh, a note about a no-go zone area or other information you guys should be aware of mid-season, you'll find all of that on the landing page in the form of, uh, you know, like newsletters. We send them out pretty regularly, usually monthly. Um, again, making reservations and then requesting reciprocal reservations is all in those videos. But to give you a brief overview, with all of your memberships, you have, um, I believe it's capped at three reciprocal reservations at any of the Carefree Boat Club's anywhere. So for example, down here in Florida by Marco Island, there's a Cape Coral Carefree Boat Club. So if you were down here like me um, vacationing and you said, you know what, I really want to take my family out on a carefree outing, you can do that at the Cape Coral location uh, a maximum of three times. And then there's three per location. So three at Cape Coral, three in San Francisco, three in Tennessee, three in South Carolina, and so on. Um, and the way you make those reciprocal reservations is they are by request. So they go through the carefree corporate system. They approve the reservation request for you. They make the reservation. You don't actually go through and make them yourselves the way that you would for the Southern Connecticut locations. So keep that in mind. It's submitting a request and the requests prompt you with all the proper questions. What kind of boat do you want? Um, does morning or afternoon work better for you? What days work for you? They'll usually ask you for your top three if they can't get you the first, your first choice, they'll try to get you your second or your third choice um, and so on. So they give you really easy prompted questions. It's very simple to make a foreign reservation. And then Penny, who takes care of all the foreign reservations at corporate will get back to you um, with whether or not they can accommodate the, uh, the reservation. So are there any questions on reservation making at all before we move on? Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna skip this, uh, this informational video slide since you guys already know our YouTube channel has a bunch of great, great videos. Um, and there's an upcoming about in-depth charting as well. If you have a little more experience and you'd like to learn a little bit more about charting um, and you know more uh, like just more in-depth about the symbols, about where, how to navigate, about how to plant roots, all of that, that's gonna be in an upcoming video that I'm doing. So keep your eye out on the YouTube video for that. 
Um, so our next slide here is going to be really important. That's why it's written in red. This is kind of the the member end of keeping the boat club as nice, as friendly, as accommodating, and just as simple as it can be for us, for you guys, and for all of the other members. So we have two rules. Um, they're kind of cardinal rules that we call them that we really ask you guys to be aware of. The first one is boating in five feet or more of mean water. Now throughout this uh, PowerPoint and throughout all of the informational material that you're gonna have, you're gonna see the symbol, uh, not the symbol, the acronym MLLW. That means mean, low, lowest water. And what that is, is it's the average low water depth in a specific area that's been recorded over a period of time. So to give you an example, to make that make a little more sense, say you're a Westport member, you're heading out of Westport Harbor and you're right outside of the channel. On your map, you're gonna see a little number and I'm gonna show this to you in a few minutes. So don't worry if my, if my image processing doesn't make sense, but you're gonna see a little number, three, a four, a five, an 11, any number, and that is the absolute lowest that it gets in that area for depth any time of day. And that's been recorded over you know, the past five or 10 years or so. So our boating rule is that our boats have to stay in five feet or larger. The reason for that is that the, um, the you know, probably the, the maximum or the least amount of depth that our boats can go in is about three to four feet. So if you stay in five or above, you're gonna be pretty much in good shape at, at almost all times. Of course, this doesn't relieve you of the expectation that you're watching your charts at all time and making sure that you're aware of your position. But if you stay in five feet or more mean water at, at all times, you're gonna be in, in pretty much in good shape. Um, so along with that rule is just the general stuff that you are captain of the boat. Um, we do have some no-go zones and some boundaries that I'll make you aware of later in the presentation. And it is the expectation that you as the captain are aware of those boundaries and staying out of the no-go zone areas and making sure that you're staying inside the green marked channel areas. Again, gonna go over this in a few slides. So don't worry if it doesn't make total sense at the moment. And then our second cardinal rule is being courteous and respectful of our, of our dock staff and our boats at all time. Of course, the boats should be treated like they're your own because for the time being of your reservation, it is your boat. So we ask in terms of keeping things clean and neat, listen, we're a boat club. We understand the boats get salty. The kids eat their goldfish and it gets on the deck. That's not what we're worried about. We're, what we're mostly concerned about is just keeping things as clean as the best you can, picking up your trash and making sure that the boats um, you know, are respected. And that involves keeping them in areas where they're supposed to be and keeping them out of areas where they're not supposed to be. And of course, the other one is fairly obvious, being courteous and respectful to our dock staff. In the interest of complete honesty, we are a boat club, which means that our success as a boat club and your success as members depends somewhat on other members also being respectful of the rules. That's part of the communal boat club experience. Unfortunately, you may be on the receiving end at some point of a phone call that says, hey, we're really sorry, you have a reservation tomorrow morning and the member tonight just broke the boat that you were supposed to be on. We're doing our best to get you on another boat, but we're gonna provide you another solution or do the best that we can to make your experience, you know, to fix this, this problem for you. Please keep in mind the dock staff, that may be me, it may be one of my staff members that's under me that's calling you, didn't break the boat, another member did. So as much as we understand fully how frustrating that can be to have that to be having that phone call it's not our fault and we just ask that you try to keep that in mind and just understand that you know we're doing the best that we can to, to keep your experience you know the best that it can be and always prioritizing um you know your safety we don't want to send you out on a boat that's damaged um so with that are there any questions about that slide everything makes sense okay mm -hmm. great awesome so we're just going to move into some basic navigation now um but before we do Number one thing about being in a boat club is being able to start the boat. And something that I like to make all of my members aware of is that all of our boats have a safety feature that they won't actually start in gear. So if you've got your boat in forward and you go and shut the keys off and trim up the engine and all your family goes swimming, you're going to get back on the boat, have everybody on, ready to go, settled. And you go to turn that key with the boat still in forward, you're going to hear absolutely nothing from, this, from the engine. No clicking, no trickling, nothing. You're going to hear absolutely nothing. The reason for that is if you were to start a boat in forward, and it actually started, chances are the boat would just take off on you with, you know, with very, um, 
you know, without you expecting it. And that's a very dangerous thing. So none of the boats will start if they're in gear. So if that ever happens to you and you're hearing absolutely nothing from the engine, here's my advice. Take your throttle, push it all the way forward as, fa as, uh, as far as you can and very slowly pull it back until you hear one click. That one click is forward. You're gonna pull it back again very slowly until you hear a second click. That second click is neutral. Then try to turn the engine on and if it starts, fantastic. 98% of the time, that's gonna be your problem. If it doesn't start, there is one other thing that you can check and that's another safety feature called a kill switch. And you're gonna see on your on the water train, that's a little spirally red band that you wear around your wrist. The purpose of a kill switch is if God forbid you were ever thrown from the boat while driving it, that kill switch that's attached to your wrist will rip off the throttle with you and the boat will immediately turn off. So the same thing happens that if the boat was in gear, if that kill switch is not connected to the throttle via this little clip, it's very obvious once you see it, if that kill switch isn't connected, the engine's gonna do absolutely nothing. You're not gonna hear a thing from it. So check the kill switch, um, check it to make sure it's in neutral first, then check the kill switch. After that, if you're still having a problem, please give us a call on our dock cell phone number for either Bridgeport, Westport, or Stanford, wherever you left from. That number is an on the water emergency number only. Now, of course, you don't need to be sinking to be having an what we consider an on the water emergency. If you can't get your boat started and you've tried all of the other necessary um, like troubleshooting, like the neutral and the kill switch, then please give us a call and, and tell us what's going on. Nine times out of 10, we're going to be able to help you through it over the phone. But if we can't, we'll either come out to you in a, in a safety boat or we'll have, um, we have CTO on standby at all times. So we'll be able to walk you through it. Best thing to always do is stay calm. Let us help you. And we're going to do the best that we can. All right. So moving on to navigation, I'm going to do some zooming in here. If anyone has any trouble seeing what I'm pointing to, please ask me. Um, hey, can I just so ask you a quick thing, question? Sorry. Yes, yeah, let's You sure, mentioned if something comes up, phone. Did the boats come equipped with radios? Uh, so they'll all, all come with either an, in, do you mean a, a communication radio? Communication or a radio, yeah, yeah. Yes, so they all come either equipped with an internal VHF system or a handheld VHF. If they don't okay. come with the internal, we'll give you a handheld. Now, of course, if you're ever in an on the water emergency and you're somewhat far from the shore, you may not be able to contact us via radio because the signal's not strong enough. But everywhere in Long Island Sound between Long Island and Connecticut has perfectly fine cell phone service. So I don't think you'll ever find yourself in the dead spot where you can't call us. Does that make sense? Yep, yep that's great. Perfect, awesome. Um, so I just wanna move on here to the navigation unless there's any other questions. Perfect. And just going over the different colors that you're seeing here in this chart and what they mean. So the first one is the most obvious. That's what I'm gonna start off with is yellow. That is straight up land. That's the land that you see outside, you know, behind me when you can see my photo. So when you're driving along in your boat and you see land right in front of you, that's going to be in that yellow color. The one next, the color next to it, which is going to be that green color, that's called an, that represents an underwater island or an underwater surface area. So David, my colleague out in New York, has a really great saying called just because there's water doesn't mean you can boat there. And it is absolutely true. So these green areas that you see, they are covered with water, which means that from the normal view, it looks like you can go there when in reality you can't. These underwater islands are close enough to the surface where you can't see them from your boat, but you will get stuck on them. So please keep that in mind. You want to stay off the yellow, of course, and stay off the green wherever possible. Um, the next color that I want to point out to you is that really dark blue, and that's going to be your most shallow area. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here, and if you see this one right below the word pile and the two right below the six feet, please ignore the six feet. That's telling, that's telling you something different on the Navionics app. It's not important, but the one and the two is what you want to pay attention to. That's that mean low, low water, M-L-L-W, depths. So again, to reiterate what that means, right underneath the word pile where it says one, it's telling you that at its lowest point during the day, that area is going to be one foot deep. So if you ever forget what the colors mean, look at the depths and that will tell you. Again, the darkest blue is the, um, the absolute shallowest. In regards to our rule about always boating in five feet MLLW or greater, 
anytime you're in that dark blue area, you're really navigating on the cusp between where you want to be and where you don't want to be. So it's usually good practice just to stay out of the dark blue areas. Um, that's always my recommendation. So the next, oops, the next uh, color that I want to point out to you here is that lighter blue. And again, you can see the little depth here right, right below the words Goose Island. It says the number 13. That's going to be your less shallow. So now you're really navigating into like the safe boating area. 13 feet, you're not going to be grounding on, on anything as long as you're not going over an underwater island in that area. And then the one other color is just this little white strip over here, starting right to the left of where it says special anchorage. That white strip represents the channel. So for those of you who have already taken your safe boating class, the word channel makes sense to you. It's basically like the highway into a harbor. For those of you that haven't taken the safe boating class yet, that's what it is. It's basically your residential road into a harbor to go to a restaurant, to go to a marina, to go to a pool, wherever you wanna be going. Again, most channels are um, no wake zones. And that's something that I'm gonna be going over a little bit later, but to give you just a general idea, a no wake zone means that you're going very, very slow. Typically the, the general rule is five miles per hour or less. Reason being channels are typically surrounded by houses with docks, with anchored boaters, anchored sailboats, other people um, that are trying to swim. And you don't wanna to toss a massive wave off the back of your boat by going too fast and then potentially doing damage to other people's boats or making boating unsafe for any other people in the general vicinity of the channel. So keep that in mind. Any questions so far on that first chart? Great, that must mean I'm doing a good job. All right, so the second chart, the second part here is um, gonna be about your navigation symbols. So a lot of symbols going on here. So I'm gonna draw your attention to the red and green buoys that you're looking at here. The red little like cone shape and the green rectangle right next to it. Those are your channel markers. Now, as you saw, as you see in this photo, the red and the green are marking the channel and there's no white strip. So the white strip's not always gonna be available. So it's very important that you know your, the difference between your red channel markers and your green channel markers. Again, going back to the safe boating course for those of you who have already been, red, right, return. That means whenever you're going into a harbor or leaving, a, uh, pardon me, whenever you're going into a harbor, the red will always be on your right. Now, I always take a moment here to tell the story about when I was, um, learning all about the boating rules with my dad when I was like 10 years old, nine or 10 years old. And he'd say, remember Elizabeth, red, right, return. So we're entering, we've left our home port of Stratford. We're now arriving at, at Lake Montauk in Montauk, New York, and we're entering the harbor. So what side of the channel, uh, what side of our boat should the red buoys be on? And I would say, well, they should be on the left, right? My dad would say, no, why do you think that? And I'd say, well, Montauk isn't our home. We're not returning back to our home. So shouldn't it be opposite? And at that point, my dad would say, no, no, Montauk is our temporary home. So whatever channel, whatever harbor you're going into is your temporary home, which means the red will always be on your right when you're entering. And just like the red will always be on your right when you're entering, just like you think it's opposite when you're leaving, the red will always be on your left. So something I'd like to point out here, it's gonna be a little bit difficult for me to explain this because I can't use a mouse. Again, this is just my finger on my iPad, so it's a little bit frustrating, um, but I'm gonna try to do my best to talk this through, is if you all see on the right side where that little um, purple sailboat is, we're gonna be starting, place your finger at the plus sign right above where that anchor is. That's gonna be our starting point. And we're gonna to head to the left through the red and green buoys that are right to the left. Again, red is on our right as we're entering, the green is on our left. Now, as we're still moving to the left towards the next set of channel markers, you're gonna notice something a little strange that the green is on your right and the red is on your left. Now, this is really easily misinterpreted by a lot of our members as just being like screwed up channel markers. Trust me, they are not screwed up channel markers. The red needs to be on your right and the green needs to be on your left. So our best recommendation here, although it looks narrow, it's not narrow, is to hang a right turn. You're gonna be doing a right angle towards the land, coming around and keeping that green rectangle on your left and the next red cone 
on your right and coming around the bend that way, if that makes sense. So before I move on, did what I just explained make sense to everybody? Yes, okay, good. I'm glad that we have no questions so far. So I'll explain the reason for that. If you're looking at the second set of red and green channel markers, the weird ones, the one where the green is on the right and the red is on the left, what's smack in the middle of those two channel markers is a big rock called spindle rock. And to give you guys an idea of how dangerous that rock is, we had seven lower units get ripped off the boat by that rock this past season because those channel markers are so deceptive. Unfortunately, we've done a lot of talking with the Harbor Master in this area. This area is in New York. So a lot of you probably will never interact with it, but I think it's an excellent example of what you may find if you go to an area we're not aware of. We've talked to the Harbor Master in this area and they just don't wanna change them. Um, and the reason why they have them the way they are is to keep you away as a boater from that rock. So this leads me into another um, chart marker that you all should be aware of. And that's that little red square with the black circle in the middle. That is a rock and it's a big one. So anytime you see that little marker um, on the chart, you're gonna wanna keep very clear away from it. Um, does anyone have any questions so far? Awesome, excellent. Okay, so we're gonna move on and we're gonna take a break from this. I know it can be a little confusing. So we're just gonna move on to the next one, which is a legend of some channel markers that you should be aware of. And this legend actually comes from an embassy guide. An embassy guide is basically a huge book of charts for the entire Long Island Sound, New Jersey and New York area. What's awesome about an embassy guide is they also give you information about every marina on every coast in that designated area. So if you ever are wondering, say, say you want to go to um, the prime steakhouse in Northport out of Stamford, which is a really easy ride. It's only maybe 45 minutes from our Stamford Marina. It's right across to Long Island Sound and you want to take your family out for a great steak dinner, but you don't really know what channel the marina monitors on the VHF to hail them to let them know that you're coming in and that you'll need a slip assignment for for dinner. In the embassy guide, you can look up what the uh, what marina the um, prime steakhouse is at, and you can find out all of that information. So it's a great, great resource. We sell the embassy guides. Um, we sell them at a discounted rate for you guys. So um, please take advantage of, of buying them. You can buy them right off ResNet. If you have any questions about placing an order early for one of those, please ask Mary Beth. Um, and I believe she can place the order for you. Um, okay, so just pointing out another couple of, oops, um, markers here is gonna be the one, two, three, fourth one down from the, yeah, fourth one down from the top. It says five miles per hour. It's white with a little orange circle on it. That's gonna be your no wake zone buoy that I was talking about before. Anytime you see that in an area, you should be going five miles per hour or less so as to not toss a wake off the back of your boat. Okay, the rest of these are pretty standard. Um, you guys can go through them and look at them in your embassy guide. A lot of them you won't come into contact with in Long Island Sound um, and certainly they're not totally necessary for you to know as new boaters, but the big ones are the, um, are the caution buoys about the no wake zone. And then of course your red nuns, which are the cone, the red cones that you keep on your right whenever you're returning into a harbor and the green cans, which are those rectangular green markers on the chart that represent the channel. All right, before I move on, um, are there any questions? Cause I'm gonna show you guys a really great app now. Um, and I just wanna answer any questions before we move on. Man, either you guys are asleep or I'm doing an excellent job. I'm hoping it's the second one. <laughs> all right, so number two, all right, thank you. I really appreciate that. I needed that self-confidence boost today. Um, so one of the charts that I wanna introduce, uh, one of the apps that I wanna introduce you guys to is called Navionics, N-A-V-I-O-N-I-C-S. Navionics is both a computer app, a desktop app, and a phone app. If you wanna download it on your phone, I believe the cost currently is $21.99 as a recurring membership annually. It is 150% worth it. It's an awesome app. It allows you to chart your own routes. It allows you to see everything that I just showed you on the PowerPoint right up close. You can zoom right in and see all of your mean low water numbers as I'm showing you now. You can see your red cans and your green cans as I'm demonstrating to you to demonstrate the channel. And you can plot your own routes. I think it's an excellent app and it's really user-friendly. I think the colors are really clear 
Um, it's everything is very obvious what it all means. And one of the nice things is if you were to zoom in on a specific symbol, oopsies, let it load. If you were to zoom in on a specific symbol, you can click it, click this question mark, and you can get some information of it on it. So there it is, Compo Yacht Basin. That little sail, that little purple sailboat is representing Compo Yacht Basin in Westport. So I think it's an awesome app. Highly recommend downloading it. And one thing that I want to show you on it that I think is excellent is the root plotting feature. So I'm just scrolling over here to where the Carefree in Westport is. So for those of you who know our location right by the Saugatuck Bridge, which is right here, the Swing Bridge, our location is right to the bot, is right underneath it, right there for those of you that can see the um the cross, that's our location. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, I'm getting ready tomorrow to go out of my reservation from Westport and I'm not totally familiar with the channel yet. So I'm gonna create a route for myself that I can just follow to the T, keep my boat on the purple line, gonna be super easy. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my finger here or you can take your mouse or you can do it on your phone, doesn't matter. And I'm just gonna tap right, oopsies, tap and hold down right by where the, come on. Okay, technical difficulties, hold on. Okay, let's try, oh, that stinks, hold on. There we go, let's try this again. Oh, actually, you know what? I know why it's not working because I didn't click root, my bad. So before we start doing that, we're gonna go down here to the bottom and click root and you're gonna see two options pull up, automatic or manual. I always choose manual. My reason why is if you were to choose point A and point B on automatic, it's gonna draw you a straight line, but it's gonna draw you a straight line through every underwater island, through the highway, through a bridge, through another boat, through everything. So it doesn't matter. So I choose not to use the automatic because I think it's just more confusing. The manual is a lot easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and click manual. Here's the waypoints that are gonna show up on the back on the left side here, and I'm gonna click my first waypoint. And there's that little purple circle rep rep representing my first waypoint. I'm gonna click another one. There we go. And I'm just gonna keep on clicking through everything. I'm gonna avoid that green underwater island on the right. And I'm just gonna keep on clicking my way through the channel. Now, for those of you that are saying, hold on, Liz, there's no red and green markers. Where's the channel? Unfortunately for you Westport members, there are no channel markers in this specific area of the Westport channel. You will understand it's basically a straight line through two bridges. Once you do your on the water training, this is gonna be a lot clearer. So don't freak out just yet. Again, just clicking my way through the, cha through the channel. And there's my first channel marker on the, uh, on the right side of me leaving the, so can anyone tell me just real quick what side if I'm leaving Westport Channel, what side should that green marker be on? Should it be on my left side or on my right side? Right, right. Left. Left. So right. for everyone that said it should be on my right side, you are correct. So remember, when you are leaving a channel, red should be on your, excuse me, red should be on your left, green should be on your right. So for those of you who said right, you're correct. Sorry about that. Green, right um, So I'm going to head, pardon me? Yeah, could you, I just, uh, if you go back, to the last point you were in, and maybe yes. I'm being pedantic, but like the your MLWW, MLLW was two there. Uh, yes, I know I'm this has been tricky because I've taken a boat out through here. You know, I've dumped it in like under the bridge there, under the highway there yes. to the right. Uh huh. Um, and I know it's very shallow there. And I just that's yes. one of my big questions was, is there like a right? Like I see you're you're here, you know, heading a little bit more on the west side here. Is is that Correct. right, or is there no? better or worse. That is correct. You're going to want to be a little bit more on the west side of the channel there. Um, the re So I'm actually glad you brought this up because our mean low, low water rule only applies in non channels. Currently, I know it doesn't seem like it, but we are in a channel in Westport. So that mean low, low water rule does not apply here because we don't expect you to change what the tide is of course we can't expect you to do that if you have to come in the channel you have to come in the channel no matter what the depths are does that make sense so i am leaning a little bit more um if you were leaving it would be your right side of the channel i always lean a little bit more to the right side of the channel i find it's a little bit deeper over there is yeah, that a that, good answer that's good yeah yeah because yeah, I, I could read the charts but i just I know from experience that that is definitely tricky over there so like any like yes. local knowledge like that that's like again you're not going to see on the chart is, is so good to know 
Yes, I do tend to, I do. I, I mean, honestly, wherever I am, I try to stay in the middle, but I do it this way during the class so that you guys can see really clearly where the line is. I tend to stay in the middle the best that I can because technically you are constrained by your draft in this area. So middle is, middle is always better, if that makes sense. Is that a good answer? Yep, okay answer. Good answer. Good, okay, great. Um, so I'm just gonna continue to plot my course here. Again, keeping the green can on my right. I'm gonna go right there, going around. I'm just gonna put this, oopsies. Put that away so you guys can see it full screen. And, and there's just another question. If, if you didn't yes. put the manual, if you did the automatic, it, it wouldn't kind of go around. It would just give like a straight shot out. Is that what you were exactly, saying? Exactly. A great shot out. So it asks you for your starting point A, which you could put as your current location, which would be at the Westport dock and then an ending point B. And let's say you wanted to go to Sand City in Long Island. It's going to draw you quite literally a straight line. It will yeah, not okay. do all the curves for you. So that's got why it, I it. prefer to do the manual as opposed to the automatic, because this way yeah. I can avoid specific obstructions that I know are on the way there. Definitely. And then just a, a super dumb question, I yeah. think is pretty obvious, but to be safe, like it's plotting your GPS, like there'll be like a little dot on there that shows exactly where you are. Yes, exactly. There will be a dot, of course, because I'm not in Westport right now. It's sure, not showing sure. as my location in Westport. It's showing as my location as in Florida. Um, but it's going to be way easier for you guys to see it on the actual, the Connecticut coast rather than the Florida coast, Perfect. which is why I do it this way. But yes, on your GPS, on the Navionics app, on any other GPS app that you use, there will be a, I, usually it's a little red triangle that represents your boat, which is your current location. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep plotting a few more points here for you. Again, keeping this green, hi, Char. Uh, again, keeping this green can on my right as I'm exiting the harbor. And there's my next red can. Again, the channel here is very confusing. I've always said that Westport could benefit from a few more um, channel markers, but they don't put them in. And I'm gonna be keeping that red can on my what? My left or my right as I'm leaving the harbor? Left. Left. Hell yeah, that's right, the left. So here I go. Uh oh, come on. Hopefully these technical difficulties won't happen to you when you uh, go to plot your points. There we go. All right. And again, moving to my next red buoy, gonna keep that one on my left. And you guys get the general idea. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop there and just show you one other benefit of this app is this little green save button down here at the bottom. I'm not logged into Navionics currently, so it's gonna force me to log in. So I'm just gonna click do not save for now. But what you would be able to do if you were logged in is save that as Westport Channel or whatever you want. If you found the route to Sand City and you decided, hey, you know what? I really want to do that again next time. You can put the route in and save it as route to Sand City from Westport. You can do whatever you want. So it's really awesome. And another benefit is this app on the mobile version only, not on the computer version. You can actually email me your routes. I have Navionics, so you can email it to me and say, hey, Liz, when you get a second, I've got a reservation coming up in you know three or four days. Please give me a little bit of time to review your routes. Can you take a look at this route for me and just make sure it's all good? And I am happy to do that for you. I, I really enjoy that. That's part of my job that I really like. So please send me your routes and say, check this out. Is it look okay? Am I going through any rocks? Am I going to damage the boat? What am I, is it safe? Is it easy? Is it the fastest way to get there? Just ask me questions and I'm happy to do that. So make sure you take advantage of that throughout the season. Only thing I ask is like, like I said, just give me, you know, two or three days heads up so that I so that I can take some time in case I'm really busy to get back to you guys. All right. Our last uh, couple of sections here is gonna be our no-go zones. So whoops, my God, my phone. Is there I a way to sync this yes. uh, this route with the Garmin GPS by any chance? Yes, there is a way to do that. Um, I'm actually in the process of signing up for a Garmin class that allows me to um, to learn how to do that. So I'm learning how to do it for you guys. And then once I'm down on the docks and you guys meet me, you want me to come down there and show you there is a way to sync Navionics with the Garmin app since they are both produced by Garmin. And I assume like all the boats have Garmin's um, most of our boats have Garmin's. We do have a few Simrad systems um, uh, in our fleet. We are trying to kind of phase those out and sell the boats that have Simrad systems as we just find the Garmin's are a bit more user friendly. But the Simrad's are, 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 they're not bad. They're not bad GPS's at all. They're very clear. 
um, you know, they work very well and we're, uh, you know, we're working hard to make sure that they're, they're user-friendly for you guys in the best way that they can be. But the majority of the boats you will encounter have garments. Yes. Any other questions at the moment? Okay, perfect. So I'm just going to move on to our no-go zones. Now, what a no-go zone is, is really simple. It is simply do not go there. So you'll see on every GPS in the carefree fleet, you'll actually see the red borders that you're looking at right now on my screen um, in certain areas. This one that you're looking at is Penfield Reef and Bridgeport. And we ask that you just stay out of the out of the boundary of the red line. The reason why is because a no-go zone is an area that the club specifically has designated as dangerous boating. So it's not just dangerous to the boat, it's dangerous to you guys as well. Because if you're going too fast in an area like this and you cross over the reef, the underwater reef that you see right there extending from the mainland to the end of the boundary, you could accidentally, you know, fling someone from the boat if they're not holding on correctly. So it is very dangerous. So that's why we ask the club boats to stay out of these areas under, excuse me, all circumstances. So that makes sense to everyone? And are these right. areas highlighted on the GPSs as well, or? Yes, they are highlighted on the GPSs, every single one. So no matter what boat you go on to, you're gonna hop on the GPS. And if you see that red line, you know to stay out of there because we have it on every GPS. Okay, so we're gonna be moving over to the next one here, which is Kokini Reef in Westport. And please pay particular attention to the bottom right corner of this, of this um, photo, where you see that not only is the reef itself and that whole shallow dark blue area considered off limits, but there's another little section, two little sections actually that we consider to be off limits. The reason why is because those areas are so riddled with rocks that are not necessarily on the GPS. They're just, it's, what the GPS does is it marks one large rock and writes foul area next to that rock. And what that's trying to tell you is that this whole section of ocean is just riddled with rocks. A lot of our members miss that. So we've designated the whole foul area as a no-go zone. Um, and another thing that I'd like to point out on the better side of things is that green line going into Westport Harbor. That is again put together by the club available on every GPS on every one of our boats. And it's the green is go channel line. So for every one of our harbors, Bridgeport, Westport, Stamford, Rye, and New Rochelle, you'll see this green line designating exactly the way to go into every harbor, which is really, really nice, especially for those of you who are Westport members, which I believe I have a few of you tonight. The Westport channel can be very confusing, especially when it comes to what side of the heart of the channel you actually want to stay on. As we were talking about before, that green line is right there for you. Any other questions? Okay, great. So one other no-go zone that we are designating is in the Stamford Club. Um, you'll see that we actually fixed the Stamford Harbor um, entry line, the, the channel line. We have put that in there. It's not there in this photo, but we have put it on all the GPSs. Right to the right of that harbor entrance where the channel is, is a really, really rocky area. As you can see, all those white bursts with the black kind of crosses or the black like little stars in the middle. Those are all rocks. And you can say that it says foul right on the, the kind of the more right side of that area. That's also rocky that we just don't allow people in there at all. And again, you can see kind of towards the bottom of the photo in the bottom right that there is another circle there right next to the words the cows that also designates another no-go zone area. So you can pass through those sections, but not you by what I mean is you can pass in between those two sections, but not on top of either section. All right, one last one. This doesn't really apply to any of you because you're not New York members, but if you do ever decide to go out of Rye, you can see the green channel marker or the green channel lane there that we've marked out for you right to the right of it is the scotch caps. And you can see all those red stripes, all the white bursts with the black stars in the middle, the, the yellow islands, the visible islands, the underwater islands. That is called the scotch caps and it is 100% off limits. Navigating in there is so tricky and treacherous and we really ask that people stay out of there. 
Okay, now on to some happier, more fun news. Um, this is probably Mitch's favorite part of the presentation is he shows this anchorage area in the BVI's um, over by St. Croix, I think is where it is. Um, and what this is, is an anchorage area is just a good area for people to be anchoring in. What it's telling you is that you will most likely find a lot of boats anchored in this area. And what this area actually looks like is this right here. You can see all of the boats anchored out and it's a, it's a swim up beach bar, which is awesome. Um, and Mitch's little plug here for, for boating in Long Island Sound, it, it really is true. If you can boat in Long Island Sound, the rocky coast of Connecticut with all those underwater islands and foul areas and rocks and all that nuttiness, you can boat just about anywhere. Because uh, it really is, I, I think, one of the hardest areas to learn on um, just because it's so rocky and you're already learning a lot of information. So it's a lot to keep track of. So let us help you take the information we're providing with you uh, or we're providing for you, um, you know, seriously and ask us questions. And we're, we're, we're definitely going to turn you guys into, into great, confident, safe voters. So any questions before we move on to our member quiz? No? All right, sweet. Um, so, oh, well, uh, actually- Sorry, Liz, one, on. one question. Yeah, yes, I was just gonna ask you about these apps because I saw Na yes. Navionics is on here and th the names of these other apps as well. Yes, I'm gonna, I completely forgot. I was like not even looking at my screen when I, when I said <laughs> that. But yes, the other apps um, that I wanna go over, obviously the first one there is Navionics. I already gave the plug for that one. Please get it, it's completely worth it. The one below that is the um, NOAA, N-O-A-A, -A, which is the National Oceanographic Atmospheric Association. I think it's the weather app, people. Um, I, I prefer AccuWeather as opposed to the NOAA app. The NOAA app um, tracks the hurricanes, which I don't think is totally necessary for you guys. We track the hurricanes for you. Unless you really want it, I think it's unnecessary information that kind of cloud like clouds up the app from the information you really want, which is temperature, time, rain probability, and wind speed. Um, I think that the, the, tra the hurricane tracking is just kind of distracting to that. So I prefer AccuWeather. I think AccuWeather is really, really easy um, to navigate. So I prefer that, but NOAA, NOAA weather works too. Um, the one below that, the little, wave, the little blue wave is tides. This map is immeasurably helpful to you. And all that does is it takes your exact location. You can change the location to Westport, to Stanford, wherever you want. And it'll give you the current tide at this exact time where you are. So for example, if you know that you're, for my Westport members, if you know you're going to leave the Westport channel tomorrow on your reservation at three o'clock, and that's when your reservation starts, and you go and check ahead the tide for tomorrow and you notice that it's absolutely dead low tide and you know that the channel is going to be very, very shallow and you just don't want to put up with that extra kind of stress. What you can do is go out a little bit after low tide passes, maybe around 345 instead of three o'clock when you've got a little bit more water in the channel and you just won't experience as much stress going in a shallow area um, where it's necessary, like Westport. Um, so that's why I really like to use the Tides app. And then that last one on the bottom is your embassy guide, which I've already so spoken to you guys about. To all the apps What's the name of the Tides app? Is it literally just Tides or? Tides. It's called Tides, T-I-D-E-S. Right. So exactly what you said. Yep. Any other questions at the moment? All right. So. Go ahead and open up your Kahoot app. I'm going to go and start the quiz. And uh, looks like, like a we're number running right on give us? What was that? So, so I, I just downloaded it. Um, so it's like it looks. Yes, there's a, like pin a pin number. OK. Exactly. So I'm going to go ahead and start in classic mode as you got. You guys can see all this, right? Get ready to join. Yeah. This get ready to join screen. Awesome. Yeah. And then your game pin is 3117793. So I'm just going to wait for everybody to join. Take a minute if you want to go to the bathroom. Go ahead and do that. I'll give everybody a couple minutes. And once I see everyone join, um, just make sure you use like your, your regular name. Don't put like, Mitch was teasing me on my trial of this, uh, of this Zoom class and he put like some weird name. And, uh, and I was like, wait, who is this? 
So I uh, try to use your, your first name just so I can make sure that everyone is, is in the quiz and taking it. And I can check you all off for the quiz as well as the class. Yeah, I'm having trouble finding where to get into the pen. What was that? I'm having trouble finding where you go there into your pen. Got it. You got it? Could you maybe turn the volume down on the music? Yeah. Let me, uh, let me figure out how to do that. Hold on one second. Okay. Yeah, I'm having trouble finding where to go there. Lobby music. Can we do none? There you go. How do we do none? Well, whatever it is, it stopped, at least on our side. I have a feeling it's going to start back up when, when I you go. go back in. Yeah, uh, when I go back in. Can I do well, like once more? you start the quiz, it might not do it. All right, let's try it, guys. It also up at the top left there was something that looked like it might have been a volume uh button, but we'll see. You see right like see, just a little that, bit to the left and did down. Did that turn it off? Yeah, I don't hear it anymore. Still good. That did right? it, yeah. Okay, then let's click start and we're gonna get going. All right. So I've got all of you in. And uh I'm gonna go ahead and read the questions and the answers once to you guys, but you will also see it on the All right, so your first question is, how do I contact the doc staff for non-emergency related issues? Unfortunately, the music has returned. Um, so I'm sorry about that if you guys can he can't hear me. I don't know how to turn down the volume. Um, but your responses for this question are either gonna be the red, calling the doc directly at 866-4-GO-BOAT, uh, the blue, texting the doc staff at your selected location, or the yellow, emailing the staff at carefreeboats.com. So once everyone answers, the quiz will automatically end, or the question will automatically end. Great. Okay. So this is actually my fault. Um, I don't think I actually went over this on, on <laughs> the, uh, the PowerPoint. So for non-emergency related issues, we ask that you text us at the selected location that you wanna be in contact with. The reason why is because the phone number calling the doc directly, we like to keep that open for on the water emergencies only. Does that make sense for, to everyone? Okay, I hope that makes sense. I'm sorry about that. If you got that one wrong, which it looks like everybody did, don't you worry about it. I'm not even gonna count it, so don't worry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that was my fault, my bad guys. All right, so we have a little scoreboard going here. It'll load up in a second. And we're just gonna continue on to the next question, which is what are the two cardinal rules of the club? Is it the red answer, being courteous and respectful to the staff and no boating in five feet or less mean low, lowest water? Is it the blue answer, which is the boat is your responsibility and there's only two people maximum allowed on a tube at once? Is it yellow, you must be 25 years or older to be a member and boat only at high tide? Or is it green, do not climb on top of the center? Okay, y'all got that one right. I don't know about that one. Everybody always gets that right, so good job. Congratulations. All right, so we got a little bit of a, uh, of a competition going on, so I'm very curious to see who is going to win. All right, so how do I know if the boat club is open? Is it the red response calling the dock staff directly? The blue response checking the ResNet landing page for announcements? Is it yellow texting the dock staff or is it green all of the above? Okay, so some of you got that one right. And so checking the ResNet landing page for announcements, absolutely you can find out if the club is open, but all of those options are applicable. And the only reason to clarify, because I know this question was confusing for some people in the other class, calling the doc staff directly is an option because if the club is closed, you'll hear that on our voicemail. The only thing we ask is not cloud is not clouding up that direct line, the calling line um, with like, can you help me change my reservation? And we're gonna be clogging up the phone line for like 10 minutes trying to take care of that. Does that make sense for everybody? Yes. Okay, great. We just said in the last question though, not to call unless it's an emergency. Yes, I know. So the, the only difference is that on days where the club is actually closed, we won't be in the office. So if you want to call us, you can. Um, my, the best, I didn't really create this quiz. So my best advice is, 
text us or check the landing page. If you if you're not calling for an emergency, don't call us if that makes sense. That's my best advice. Yeah. Just... So. But you're right. You're, the last question does make it a little confusing. You're, you are totally right. Okay, so next question is, what is a no-go zone? Is it the red answer, a boating area with shallow water, a blue, the blue answer, a zone that the club has identified as dangerous boating, none of the above, or an area where boats are not allowed to anchor? I have a, I have a good feeling about this question. Awesome, okay. So yes, you, for those of you that chose the blue answer, a zone that the club has identified as dangerous boating, you are totally correct. For those of you that um, chose an area where boats are not allowed to anchor or none of the above, the other answers, the boating area with shallow water and not allowed to anchor, those are qualities of a no-go zone. Yes, they are typically areas that are shallow and yes, they are areas where you should never anchor. But the actual definition of a no-go zone, what we really wanna try to, to help you guys understand is that we've identified it as dangerous. Dangerous really is the key word there, okay? Hey, Ellen, doing pretty good. You've held it for two questions in a row now. Great job. All right, so now you guys are gonna look at a chart and tell me which symbol represents rocks. Is it A, that kind of red square with the black circle in the middle? Is it B, that lighter blue shade of, uh, of area? Or is it C, that purple sailboat with the purple circle around it? So the red answer responds corresponds to A. The blue answer corresponds, okay, yeah, y'all knew that one. That one's an easy one. Great, I'm glad y'all got that. Okay, Ellen, good job, keeping it strong. All right, my boat will not stir, start. What do you do first? Do you, the red answer, do I call the dock staff immediately? The blue answer, do I call CETO? The yellow answer, do I dial 911? Or the green or the green answer, do I check the shifter? Is it neutral and try to start it? Yes, so your answer is gonna be checking to make sure that the shifter is in neutral and trying to start it. Um, we, You're welcome to call us if you're having an issue starting the boat, but remember it's after checking that the shifter is in neutral and then checking that um, the uh, emergency clip, the kill switch is connected to the throttle. Next. All right. Next is, am I responsible for damage to the club boats when I am using the boat, but I'm not on board? So let's say, for example, you leave Bridgeport Harbor, you head over to Port Jeff, you dock the boat for lunch, get off the boat, you come back and see a really big scratch in the boat. Are you responsible for that damage? Is the answer yes? No, and you should try to hide the damage. No, because you didn't cause the damage or no, and get information from the person who did cause the damage. This is a little bit of a trick question. So we'll go over it if anyone gets everything correct. Okay, so most of you picked the right answer, which is yes. You are always responsible for any damage that happens to the boat while the boat is in your possession. Um, now, if you do ever get in a situation where you, vis you visually see someone like ram into your boat and they do damage and you want to get information from them for you personally, that's fine. But because the club does not ensure the person who did the damage, they only ensure you as the captain, we can't do anything with that information. If you want to, that's fine, but we don't use that information. We have to go directly through you because you're the one that's on our insurance policy. So that makes sense to everybody. Yep. Perfect. All right, so we'll move on to the next question here. Trevor, great job. Streak, six correct answers in a row. Okay, so what is the defin of, definition of mean lowest low water, MLLW? Is it A, um, excuse me, is it the red answer, the lowest of the two low tides per day? Is it the blue, which is the lowest depth of water at high tide? Is it the yellow answer, the lowest depth of water you can enter without damaging the boat? Or is it the green answer, the average of the lowest low water tide observed over a period of time? I'm feeling good about this answer too, or about this question. Okay, great, so a little bit of confusion on this one, that's okay. It looks like the most, most of you got the uh, correct answer, which was the average of the lowest low water tide observed over a period of time. So, for those of you that chose the red answer, the lowest of the two low tides per day, 
technically that's inaccurate because let's say you're at exiting Westport Harbor and you're in an area where the chart says that little one and the, that one. The lowest tide of today could be two feet there, but over the past five to 10 years, the average low tide has been observed to be one foot there. So remember with the moon cycles, you could experience an extreme low tide. You could experience an extreme high tide in which the low tide of the day may differ from other days where the moon cycles are standard. Does that make sense to those of you who answered with the red, um, with the red answer? Yeah, okay, perfect. And for those of you that answered with the yellow, um, which was the lowest depth of water you can enter without damaging the boat, um, that one I would just caution you uh, against thinking that way because that the, the areas that I have mean lowest low water could be one foot. And of course you can't enter an area that's one foot without it damaging the boat. You will end up grounding it and possibly damaging the prop. Um, so does that make, does it make sense why everyone who chose the yellow answer, which is the one that I'm a little more concerned about, um, does it make sense why that one is not correct and why the green answer is, is the correct one? Okay, perfect, great. Again, if you guys have any questions about these, uh, you know, these um, questions and you want to ask me after class, if you just want to talk to me privately, I am available. So I'm just going to hang out and just eat pizza with my family tonight. So don't even worry about it. And we're not doing anything special. Okay, so question nine. Um, again, you're going to be looking at, a, at another chart here and you tell me where there's a navigation area uh, and a navigation error rather. So starting up at the top left of the chart, in that white channel area, you're gonna be following the red line going through point A, then taking a right turn heading through point B, taking another turn heading through point C, and then taking another turn and heading through point D. So at A, B, C, or D, is there a navigation error? A corresponds to the red answer, B corresponds to the blue answer, C corresponds to the yellow answer and D corresponds to the green answer. Something you may want to pay attention to in this question is red right return and then shallow areas and rocky areas. Um, you know, that kind of plays a part into why there's a navigation error on this path that these people have plotted. Sorry, this is really small for us to see. It's okay. It's, very it's okay. Small, I understand. Yeah. I'm yeah, sorry. It's really, really hard, hard to, to see. It's really <laughs> hard. To see. Oh, that was that better. Was, that was. I already put my answer in, Liz. I already put I'm my answer sorry, in. I'm sorry, you guys. It can't change your answer. All right, we'll go over this again. We'll go over it again if it was confusing at all. Well, I think it's more clear now. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Green on the way out. Oh, we're coming this way. One, two, three, four. Right. Left clear, I think. Music is strangely calm for the situation we're all in. Okay. So most of you got that one correct. Um, a couple of you did pick green and a couple of you did pick red. So we're going to yeah, go over that, that right. one. That's, yes. We're going to go over that one and I'll make the photo a lot bigger um, so I can show you guys. Oh, no, I know. I said see first. Sorry. Where you were looking. Um, so don't my worry, finger we'll hit the one. wrong thing. So. Pardon me? I said my finger just hit the wrong one. Don't worry, I'm not judging. Um, just so everyone knows, this course, I didn't really say this at the beginning of the class, but this this class is situated the same way that like the, um, you know, the gun permit, like the NRA permit is. Everyone passes, even if you, you know, got five out of 10 of the questions wrong, everybody passes after this class because I'm gonna go over every question where there's where there are wrong answers and explain why the wrong ones are wrong and why the right ones are right. And hopefully everyone who chose the incorrect answer will understand why they were wrong by the end of the quiz. So everybody passes, so don't get, don't get stressed. We're all good. <laughs> okay, last question here, guys. Ooh, go ahead, go to next. Okay, name a resource that provides up-to-date weather information. So your options are NOAA Weather, the National Oceanograph Oceanographic, uh, whatever it is, Atmospheric Association, um, Carefree Boat Club staff, the Weather Channel, or all of the above.
So about half and half here. NOAA Weather, the Carefree Boat Club staff, remember you can text us and you can also check the ResNet landing page, which is operated by the Carefree Boat Club staff. The Weather Channel, all of us provide up-to-date weather information. So all of the above would be the answer. Is the reason why people were confused with the NOAA Weather is still going back to that, like you can't call the dock staff for weather questions? I, I was thinking NOAA was the better answer because okay. like, you don't want to harass yeah. the boat staff or for yeah, weather with those right. other sources. Yeah. That's well, I, I definitely thinking. appreciate that outlook. You know, we do get really busy at the dock. So the fact that you guys are already thinking like, we don't want to bother you guys with unnecessary stuff. Whether Nothing is unnecessary. Any questions that you got, guys have, I don't consider to be unnecessary. Um, NOAA weather is fine. The weather channel is fine. Texting us at the dock is completely Most fine. Checking the landing page. All that is totally fine. Um, and you know, something that you might want to do is if, for example, let's say your reservation is in the afternoon, right? And the re and the morning weather looks rainy and like it might extend into your afternoon reservation. You're not totally sure whether or not you want to cancel your reservation yet. And you want to text the staff and say, hey guys, listen, I've got my reservation at three o'clock. I'm kind of on the bend about canceling it. Can you just update me about the weather around two o'clock? And then I'll make my decision then like what the weather is looking like. And we can tell you, you know what? cleared up, we checked the radar, there's gonna be no rain, come on down if you want, or there's gonna be some scattered storms or it's gonna be a complete downpour washout, don't even bother coming. Um, so you can do that for us as well. Again, over text is the preferred way. Does that make sense to everyone? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. All right, so that's the end of our quiz. So they do this little podium at the end, which I think is very fun. In third place, we have Lambert Albers. In second place, we have Ellen, great job guys. First place. You did? <laughs> we got Alan. And we got runners up Sean and Marcus. Great job, you guys. Thank you for putting up with my cheesy cover quiz. Um, we'll wait for the why is the music still going? Is the real question. Let's get that out of there. That took care of that, didn't it? All right, we'll go back to our PowerPoint here. And oh, you guys wanted to go over um the charting question. So we can do that and we'll zoom in on the quiz. Hold on. You wanna come say hi? I need my water. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay, sorry, I didn't know. <laughs> that was my niece, everyone, for everyone who's curious. I was using her water bottle to hold up my iPad, but apparently that's, that's over with now. All right. Um, so we'll go over to the quiz and I'm just going to bring up that, um, that chart for you guys, which is right here. And how's this? Is this a lot better to see? Yes. Yes. Excellent. Okay. So starting at letter A, you can see that they're coming out of the designated channel area, which is that white area. Nothing wrong there making that turn to B. They're staying in a deep water area. As you can see, the MLLW depths are 15, 15, 20, 17, 19, that's all totally fine. And the problem starts to happen at point C where they make the turn number one, as they are leaving or coming, the green is on the wrong side. It doesn't matter what direction they're going. When you're leaving the channel, the green should be on your right. When you're entering the channel, the green should be on your left. In both cases in this scenario, they are having the green on the wrong side. Um, the other way that you can tell that they're kind of crossing into like the danger zone is they're getting awfully close to all of those um, rocks, that which is. are marked as the hens and chickens and into that shallow um, water area, which is marked by the dark blue. Does that make sense to everybody? Especially to those who chose the wrong answer. I'm sure part of the reason was because it was very the channel. Uh, hard to see. Any questions specifically for me about why C is the wrong, uh, is the right answer. Okay, perfect. And then if you want to take a look at D here, um, you can actually see that they did everything right because if they were leaving the channel, the red is on their left, the green is on their right. If they were entering, the red would be on their right, red, right, return. The green would be on their left. So they did everything right there and they stayed in a, uh, in a deep water area, which is, which is, Good, good voting. So I'm gonna go ahead and let there are any other specific questions about the quiz and I'm just gonna stop sharing my screen if that's okay with everybody. Heading back to Zoom and I'm gonna stop my share.
All right, now I can see you all again. Hopefully you all can see me. So, oh, live broadcast has stopped. Okay. Okay, great. Sorry, I don't know what happened there. Um, any questions? I'm opening up, opening up the floor. So that red rate returning thing, I too had the same thing as a young child. I always thought it was returning to the sea or something like that. I had my acronym right. all wrong. So trying to retrain my brain. But you've used yeah. two different ways. Return into a harbor and return to the channel. So returning into the harbor, returning into the channel is the same thing. Because remember, whenever you're entering a harbor, there's always going to be a channel. So they, they mean the same thing. So it's only one way. Does that, that, does that answer your question? Well, returning to the harbor would be going into the harbor. Returning Correct. to the channel. Would be going would into be. the channel, which also goes into the harbor. Does that make sense? Okay, think of it, let's think of it this way. Anytime you are going towards a port and you are entering the land from, from the open water, doesn't matter if it's Long Island Sound or the ocean, from the open water, it is red right return, always, okay. always. To As a matter land. of fact, it really, it really doesn't matter if you're entering or exiting, it is the red, if you're entering, the red is always on your right, always on your right. So it'll only be opposite if you're leaving a harbor or a channel. If anyone else has has a, an easier way of, of explaining it, please feel. I mean, you, you can you can treat it as like you go through a, you drive through a road, and when you go to your house, you drive through the driveway. So channel is a driveway, and house basically is where you are returning through the driveway. Yep, that's a great way of looking at it too. Yeah, I thought I had it. Some of these examples just confuse me, but I'll get it. Sure. So one thing that I just want to repeat is when you're actually on your on the water training and you're seeing the channel markers in front of you mm -hmm. and you're looking at the GPS and kind of matching it up, like what you're seeing in front of you and what you're looking at on your GPS right. screen below you, it's going to make so much more sense. You know, I've, I've debated whether or not to offer this introductory Zoom class prior to or after um mm -hmm. train uh the on the water training but i think just to get your like the gears in your head moving about this stuff prepares you a lot better for the on the water training than if we were to do it after so just give yourself a little bit of patience look at the charts go on the navionics app and take a look at it and i think it's going to help you um a ton yeah and i think that's the opposite because i've driven boats before and i've been out on the water before and i it's understandable <laughs> there and then when you go right. off and you're sitting at the kitchen table it's trying to take quizzes, voting is definitely <laughs> voting is definitely confusing like that I just took my my captain's license exam and I was you know I'm out on the water and I've been I've been voting on my own for 10 years you know and then let alone the voting I do for the club and the voting I've done for past jobs the voting I've done with my dad and I got to this captain's license and I thought I thought the rules and all the legal stuff would be like oh yeah second knowledge and I was sitting there studying and I didn't even pass my captain's exam the first time I'm retesting next week because it's so much harder to look at this stuff not actually out it's very difficult to envision these scenarios so I'm with you trust me it's it's not <laughs> easy but once you get it it'll really be like second nature I've always said that after a certain number of practice the boat becomes like an extension of your body and you just completely you're like you're like in sync with the boat and you will get there so don't worry about it and just my contact information is in the handbook Call me, text me, FaceTime me anytime. We're gonna see each other on the docks plenty of times, I'm sure. And I'm here to help and try to try to make this easier for you. So please make use of uh, of my All contact right. info. Thank you, Liz. Sure, you're welcome. Any other questions at the moment? What are the next steps? Yeah, so next steps is Mary Beth is gonna be reaching out to schedule your on the water training. Now in, um, you guys have got a, a little checklist of, of stuff that you need to do before you're able to make reservations. One of those is take your safe boating, um, your safe boating class and take your certificate. For those of you that have done it, check it off, great. For those of you that haven't done it yet, please schedule that as soon as possible. Um, I can't imagine how confusing all of what I was saying tonight must be for someone that didn't take the, the class yet. So do that as soon as possible and bring questions that you have as a result of this class to that class. Um, number two is going to be uploading a copy of your license either to ResNet or um, to Mary Beth. You can email it to her and scan it to her. Again, for those of you that have done it, check. For those of you that haven't, 
um, either make sure that you get a copy of your license or if you've already got a copy, just shoot it right on over to her. That way you don't have to worry about that. After tonight, you've checked off the class and you've checked off the quiz, which is awesome. The last remaining step that you have is to complete and pass your on the water training. Once you've done all that, Mary Beth will open your account to make reservations and you'll be all set to go. You can make your first reservation and meet us out on the water. When does the club open officially again? May 8th. And our reservations, I believe we have opening either April 29th or May 1st. I can't remember. Can't quite remember. Great. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Anybody Do else? you know if you're working, if you're doing any of the classes, we're scheduled for April 25th. I'm actually not sure yet. So usually they try to schedule because technically I'm not licensed to be doing training yet. I know what I'm talking about, but because I don't have the official license yet, I still have to pass my quiz next week. So please keep your fingers crossed for me. I really need the luck. <laughs> um, I don't know if I'll be doing your class. Um, I would really love to. And certainly I can, if you really want me there, certainly I can come and attend and be you know a person there to answer any questions it's just that a licensed captain has to be on the boat so hopefully i'll be doing that for you guys so just keep your fingers crossed like i said and once they say liz captain liz you're good to go then i'll be uh i'll be there for you guys great thank you and from yeah the you're very class, welcome from the class Thanks perspective so what, what will be the location so can we choose the location or do you define like what club we're, so we should go whatever to? club so all of you should have signed up with a specific club so typically okay. westport residents uh you know sign up with the westport club and whatever club you've signed up with is where your training will be out of because it's kind of assumed that you will primarily be boating out of that location where you might make use of the other locations your primary boating will be done out of one so we want to make sure that for that one you're really really trained well especially if you're in westport westport's one of our more challenging locations any other questions at the moment? All right, then I'm gonna let you guys go. Um, our 2022. Oh, I you were gonna do the uh, the fleet. Yes, yeah, so I was just gonna announce that um, our 2022 fleet can be accessed on the Carefree Boat Club website. If you go to carefreeboats.com and you go to fleet, you can go over to like Southern Connecticut and click that on the drop down menu. And then you can click it right there and it'll uh, it'll show you all the boats that we have. We do keep in mind that we have a few new incoming boats as a result of like shipping delays and processing delays from COVID. Just it's ridiculous for I'm sure all of you know how long it's taken to get anything. It took me like eight months to get a desk from uh, or from a pottery barn. It was ridiculous. So we experienced those same delays in the boating industry. So some of the boats um, that you see at the docks may be a little bit different than what's online, but we do give you a great overview of, um, of uh, uh, the general style of boats that we have, which are chaparrales, um, bay line, uh, excuse me, brigs, riballos, cobias, and nautic stars. Those are some of our, our number number of like one through five um, boat models. And they're all 2021, 20 or 2022s. So brand new, brand spanking new. Excellent. Anything else quick? <laughs> this was great. Oh. Thank okay, you, Liz. Awesome. Good. Thank you, you guys are so welcome. I'm gonna thank you very much. All, check you all out. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. I'll Bye. see you guys Bye. soon. Thank I'll see you Bye. on the water. Thanks. Bye-bye.